الطحاوي said ونثبت الخلافة بعد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أولا لأبي بكر الصديق رضي الله عنه تفضيلا له وتقديما على جميع الأمة We confirm the rulership after the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم first for Abu Bakr May Allah accept his deeds out of recognizing his superiority and advancing him ahead of the entire nation. That's the consensus of the Sahaba. Murtadu Azabidi said in the explanation of Ihya Ulumi Deen that it is invalid for the Rawafil, that's the Shiites, to say that there was an explicit religious text confirming Ali's rulership and for the Zaydiyah, the Zaydi Shiites to say that there was a text for the rulership of Al-Abbas had there been a confirmed text for anyone then that one who had a confirmed text for him from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then he would have cited that text and he would have argued by it, yani he would have used it as evidence, and he would have disputed with anyone unaccepting of it. Yani had there been for any Sahabi a text from the Messenger himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, forwarding the command to him, then he would have stood up for that just by virtue of that being the command of the Messenger not for his own love of wanting to be in command. When it was not narrated that anyone used any text upon the rulership being granted to someone else, it was known that there was no text confirming the rulership of anyone. Not a single Sahabi stepped up to say that he was the one deserving of the rulership on the authority of the messenger himself. However, it is obligatory to prefer Abu Bakr over the rest of the companions of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because all the other companions agreed to his rulership and paid allegiance to him. And their agreement is like a verse from the Quran, meaning that it's an indisputable evidence. It's decisive evidence, their ijma'ah. It is evidence dictating definitive knowledge, like an ayah from the Qur'an. As for Ali's delaying paying allegiance for six months, yani, he didn't pay allegiance to Abu Bakr immediately. It was merely that he was still grieving the death of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was not requested to appear in person. So he made the intention to pay allegiance later. And also he was busy with memorizing the Quran. Had Ali not accepted Abu Bakr's rulership, then he would not have paid allegiance to him after those six months. Yani, so it's a Shiite going to say, he's going to say, La Ali didn't accept, he didn't even pay allegiance to him for six months. So the easy answer is what? He paid allegiance to him. Into her end of story. Had he not been accepting, he would have never done so. Allah said in the Quran, كَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ We have made you a moderate nation. O nation of Muhammad, so that you would be witnesses against the people on Judgment Day. Yani, the consensus of, of Muhammad's nation is evidence. The moderation here in this ayah, the wasat, the wasat, the medium, is the trustworthiness. Thus, had his rulership not been just, Abu Bakr, 
they would have agreed on something forbidden. Had his rulership been unjust, then that would mean that the companions did what? That they agreed on something forbidden, which that's the Shiite creed. So the Shiites embrace that implication. And they therefore accuse the companions for ruining the religion. Had they only done what the messenger told them to do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now the Shiites, they need the Mahdi to come and clarify the religion for them. Whoever contests Abu Bakr's rulership contests the companion's agreement, which would be a criticism of the information revealed by Allah. Like when Allah says, وَالثَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهِ The first and early ones who embraced Islam among the immigrants and the Ansar, the supporters, Yani, the first and early ones among the Ansar from Medina. So, the original immigrants and the original Ansar and those who followed them in goodness. Allah accepts them and they are pleased with Him. So, to disagree with what those companions agreed to concerning Abu Bakr's rulership is a refutation of this ayah. Yani, it's a rejection of the ayah. Some Rawafield said, this means that Allah had accepted them, but then they deviated. Our Shaykh said, Allah is knowledgeable about what was and what shall be into the unending future. Had it been in his knowledge, that they would revert to wicked, traitorous, perverters of Allah's religion. He would not have told that he accepts them. He wouldn't have said, رضي الله عنهم, because nothing is hidden from him. He wouldn't have said that in his book, knowing that they would become evil. And then that reaches us now. And we would think that they are good. Al-Tahawi then said, ثُمَّ لِعُمَرَ بْنِ الْخَطَّابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ Then the caliphate is for Umar ibn al-Khattab. May Allah accept his deeds. As Zabidi said that besides the consensus for Umar's rulership, the consensus that is definitive evidence there's evidence from the book of Allah for Umar's rulership in the saying of Allah Ta'ala, قُلْ لِلْمُخَلَّفِينَ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ سَتُدْعَوْنَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ أُلِي بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ Oh Muhammad, say to those desert Arabs, to those Bedouins who did not fight, who sat the battle out, they didn't go with you, Say to them, you will be called in the future to fight a powerful people. The Salaf have disagreed about who is meant by a powerful people here. Qawmin uli ba'sin shadid. Who's this qawm ulu ba'sin shadid? This very powerful people. The Salaf disagreed about the tafsir of that. It was said that they are Banu Hanifa, the clan of Hanifa. And it was said to be the Persians. So, O Muhammad, say to those Bedouins who did not fight, you shall be called to fight a powerful people that might be Banu Hanifa or that might be the Persians. And then the verse continues. 
فَإِن تُطِيعُوا يُؤْتِكُمُ اللَّهُ أَجْرًا حَسَنًا وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْا كَمَا تَوَلَّيْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ كَمَا تَوَلَّيْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ يُعَذِّبْكُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا If you obey, O Bedouins, if you obey that call to fight, then Allah will grant you a good reward. And if you turn away as you have turned away before, he will torture you with a painful torture. So in this verse is the obligation of obeying the one who rallies them to fight. Say Muhammad to them, you shall be called to fight a very powerful people that's Banu Hanifa or that's the Persians. And if you obey, you will be rewarded. And if you disobey, if you respond to that call, you'll be rewarded. And if you don't respond, Allah will punish you. So then they have to respond. They have to obey who rallies them to fight. They would achieve reward for obeying and deserve torture for disobeying. If those mighty people are Banu Hanifa, the one who called the Bedouins to fight them was Abu Bakr. May Allah accept his deeds. Hence, his rulership is confirmed. And if his rulership is confirmed, then the rulership of the one who replaced him is also confirmed. And that's Umar. And if those powerful people are the Persians, then the one who called the Bedouins to fight them was Umar. May Allah accept his deeds. Thus, by the Quran, his rulership is confirmed. And by the confirmation of his rulership, the rulership of who came before him is confirmed. And that's Abu Bakr. May Allah accept his deeds. Therefore, in the verse is a reference for the rulership of the two shaykhs. May Allah accept their deeds. If they say, there are three possibilities. Who called the Bedouins could have been Muhammad, or it could have been Ali, or it could have been anyone after Ali, not Abu Bakr or Umar though. We say, the first is not possible that that was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of the saying of Allah Ta'ala in Surah Al-Fatih, Ayah 15. سَيَقُولُ الْمُخَلَّفِينَ إِذَا انْطَلَقْتُمْ إِلَى مَغَانِبَ لِتَأْخُذُوهَا ذَرُونَا نَتَّبِعْكُمْ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُبَدِّلُوا كَلَامَ اللَّهِ قُلْ لَنْ تَتَّبِعُونَا كَذَلِكُمْ قَالَ اللَّهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَسَيَقُولُونَ بَلْ تَحْسُدُونَنَا بَلْ كَانُوا لَا يَفْقَهُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Those who fell back, who didn't go out to fight, will say, if you are going to the spoils to take them, then let us follow you. They want to change the speech of Allah. Say, O Muhammad, you shall never follow us. Thus said Allah before that. Say, you shall never follow us. So then, it wasn't the Prophet who called them. As Zajjaj and a group of interpreters said, this refers to the saying of Allah Ta'ala in Surah Bara'ah. قُلْ لَنْ تَخْرُجُوا مَعِيَّ أَبَدًا وَلَنْ تُقَاتِلُوا مَعِيَّ عَدُوًا Oh, Muhammad say to those Bedouins, You shall never go out with me, and you shall not fight an enemy with me. So then it's not Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the second option is not true that that was Imam Ali because the exalted 
God said about the description of this call to fight. Allah said about the description of this call to fight. You will fight them or they will embrace Islam. That means they weren't Muslims. And Ali, may Allah accept his deeds, did not fight a battle for calling to Islam. His battles were against the disloyal ones, the unjust ones, and the renegades or the outlaws. So it's not Ali. And they said, could be someone after Ali. This third option is not valid because the opponent after that, after Ali, considers who came after that, Yani Muawiyah, blasphemers. They hate Muawiyah because he fought Ali and they claim to love Ali. So Allah saying would not be befitting of those those ones that even the Shiites uh, hate them according to the Shiites then Allah said about them those who came after Ali if you obey, obey those who came after Ali according to you, then Allah will grant you a good reward. Hence, if all of these options are invalid, that it wasn't the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it wasn't Ali, and it wasn't who came after Ali, then all that remains is the first three imams, Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman. Like Al-Tahawi said, ثُمَّ لِعُثْمَانَ بْنِ عَفَّانَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهِ Then the caliphate was for Uthman ibn Affan. May Allah accept his deeds. Therefore, the verse... That one that we said is evidence for the rulership of Abu Bakr and Omar, it's evidence for the validity of the rulership of all three of them. And in the confirmation of any one of them is the confirmation of the others. Whichever one you want to choose, when we prove his rulership, then we prove the rulership of the other two. It is obligatory to believe in the validity of the rulership of the four imams according to the order of their rulership. Because the companions, including Ali, accepted that. So that's a case of the ijma'. Yani, aren't there things that we believe because they came in the Qur'an? Yes. And there are things that we believe because they came in the Sunnah? Yes. Is there anything that we hold as conviction because it's a consensus? Yes. No ayah from the Qur'an explicitly about it or a hadith explicitly about it? The consensus validated our conviction about it? Yes. Like what? Like that the four caliphs were just in their rulership. Each respective one was just in his rulership. The evidence for that belief, that's a Sunni belief. The evidence for that Sunni belief is the ijma'. At Tahawi said, Thumma li Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. Then the caliphate went to Ali ibn Abi Talib. May Allah accept his deeds. It is indeed good to mention that some companions mutiny against the just caliph, Ali, was unjust. It's good with the intent of warning others from falling into what is similar to it. It's not good to say a blanket statement. We avoid talking about the conflict that happened between the companions. Period. Just like that. That's not a good statement. This is a better statement. That it's good to mention the conflict that happened between those companions 
with the intention of warning others from falling into what is similar to it and to clarify religious judgments. If you want, you can just say that part. To clarify religious judgments. Everyone who mutinied was unjust, as said by Imam al-Shafi'i. Al-Bayhaqi narrates in al-I'tiqad from the route of Muhammad ibn Ishaq that he said, الذي عهدت عليه مشايخنا أن من نازع أمير المؤمنين عليا في إمارته باغ وعلى ذلك محمد بن إدريس يعني الشافعي He said, what I know our sheikhs to be upon is that everyone who fought against the prince of believers, Ali, concerning his rulership were mutineers. Yani, unjust though, unjust mutiny. And that is what Muhammad ibn Idris is upon, meaning a shafi'i. Yani, they were unjust mutineers. They were unjust rebels. If we just translate the word bagh, bagh pretty much means unjust. But there's a meaning in there that they mean. Something they mean, besides just being unjust, you could be unjust for uh, looking at someone the wrong way or just saying something. They were here unjust because they were mutineers. They were insurre insurrectionaries, revolutionaries. They tried to overthrow the government. And that is what Muhammad ibn Idris is upon, meaning a shafi'i. Al-Bukhari and Ibn Hibban narrated the prophets insulting a group that had some companions, a group that included some companions. What was the prophet's insult about or you know, of those of that group? What was his insult of that group? He said, وَيَدِعُونَهُ إِلَى النَّارِ What was Ammar? The mutinous faction will kill him. He calls them to paradise and they call him to hell. This is about the people of Sufin, the army of Muawiyah. Whoever claims that this hadith is not insulting is in conflict with both Ali and Muawiyah. Because both of them accused the other of this hadith applying to him. Some of them would say, there's no insult in this. There's nothing bad here. If that's the case, then how come both Ali and Muawiyah strove to clear himself? Each one cleared himself from this hadith and applied it to the other. When what happened? When Ammar was killed, and then that was mentioned to Muawiyah, one of his accomplices who was a companion, he went to Muawiyah, he said, Ammar was killed. Because they knew about that since Ammar was young, since the time of the Prophet, they knew this was going to happen. They were waiting for it to happen. Now at the time of Ali, the civil war broke out and Ammar was killed. So he went to Muawiyah. He said, Ammar was killed. So Muawiyah said, so what? He said to him, are we the ones who killed him? No, we're not the ones who killed him. Ali and his companions killed him. They are the ones who sent him out to fight. That was haram too, to interpret the hadith like that. It's haram. What well, we learned that Muawiyah knows that's not the meaning of the hadith to say it like that. That Ali is his killer because Ali and his companions, because they're the ones who sent him out to fight. So then Ali, when that reached Ali, he responded, then Muhammad killed Hamza because, I mean, because Muhammad sent Hamza out to fight. So then, according to Muawiyah, Muhammad is his uncle's killer. And Muawiyah had no answer for that. And the scholar said so. The scholar said, this doesn't even have an answer. There's no answer for that. They said, that's irrefutable. So whoever claims that this hadith is not insulting because he's trying to defend 
the honor of Muawiyah in this case. So he's perverting the hadith for that goal. Then he's in conflict with both Ali and Muawiyah. Both accuse the other of this hadith applying to him. The Shaykh, in compliance with Imam al Ash'ari, said, Anyone who repented has had his sin erased, and whoever did not repent, then his matter is with Allah. If Allah will, he will punish him, and if he will, he will forgive him. And Nasafi said, Wal khilafa tu thabita tun ala hatha tardi bi ayuba, wal khilafa tu thalathun asana, thumma badaha mulkum wa imara. The caliphate after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is established according to this order also. The caliphate after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lasted for 30 years and then afterwards was monarchy and emirates. What proves what an nasafi said is the hadith, Al-Khilafatu ba'di thalathuna sana, thumma takunu mulka. The rulership after me will last for 30 years. Then there will be monarchy. Those 30 years were completed with Al-Hasan ibn Ali. He replaced his father, remained in office for six months, and then resigned for Muawiyah to take over, to stop the fighting. When at tahawi said about the four Imams, وَهُمُ الْخُلَفَاءُ الرَّاشِدُونَ وَالْأَئِمَّةُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ they are the guided caliphs and the guided imams. It does not mean that there is no guided caliph in the nation but these four. In fact, Al-Hasan ibn Ali, the one to whom the Muslims paid allegiance, as well as Umar ibn Abdul Aziz were guided caliphs. However, their status was lower than the four. But subhanallah wa bihamdih.